Hello and hi everyone. So in this video, I'm going to discuss about chapter 1.3 factors affecting the reaction rate. Okay, so learning outcome yang saya akan cover dalam video ni adalah learning outcome A, B dan C. Okay, so you should be able to explain the effect of the following factor on reaction rate and the effects are particle size, concentration or pressure, followed by catalyst and lastly I will discuss with temperature. Okay, sebab this temperature I will combine with the effect of temperature on reaction rate using Maxwell Boltzmann distribution curve. Okay, and while discussing about catalyst, saya akan masukkan learning outcome yang C sekali lah compare the curve of energy profile diagram for reaction with and without catalyst. Okay, so the next video akan cover learning outcome DEF. Alright, so let us look at the first factor affecting reaction rate. Okay, the first factor is particle size. The smaller the size of reacting particle, the greater the surface area of contact or surface area exposed for reaction to occur. Okay, so you can look at this diagram here. So in this diagram, ada satu diagram yang yang hijau ni besar. That's mean this particle is big in size lah. Okay, particle ni besar. While this particle is small. Okay, and then kenapa dia kata the smaller the size of the particle, the greater the contact surface area. Kenapa contact surface area makin besar? Okay, so contact surface area ni refer kepada surface area exposed for reaction to occur. So, surface area yang terdedah kepada reaction. Okay, so kalau kita tengok uh, partikel yang besar ni. Okay, so as you can see, partikel yang besar, uh, partikel yang di hujung-hujung ni je yang boleh reacted dengan partikel lain. Okay, so kiranya uh, area untuk reaction tu berlaku adalah yang tepi ni je, yang tengah ni tak. Okay, so hydrogen atom can hit the outer layer of the atom but not this in the center of the lump. So, kiranya yang tengah-tengah ni tak akan berlaku reaction pun sebab dia tak boleh nak dia tak expose to reaction. Okay, tapi kalau uh, kita pecahkan partikel tu jadi smaller partikel, so as you can see, di smaller partikel keliling ni semua apa reaction tu boleh berlaku. Okay, and tak banyak pun partikel yang berada di tengah. Okay, so kamu boleh baca ni lah dia kata, with the same number of atoms now split into lots of smaller bits, there are hardly any magnesium atom which the hydrogen atom can, can get at. Okay, so kiranya yang hijau ni magnesium, yang merah ni hydrogen. So, hydrogen boleh react dengan magnesium. Dan tak banyaklah magnesium yang tak dapat react. Okay, sebab dia punya yang tengah-tengah ni tak banyak pun. Sikit je. Tapi, this one yang tengah ni magnesium ni banyak yang tak dapat react dengan hydrogen. Okay, so hopefully you can see that kenapa smaller size of reacting particle, surface area dia makin besar. Surface area of contact. Of contact dia makin besar. Okay. So, alright. So, kita akan move to the next point. So, what if kalau contact surface area besar? Contact surface area besar, that's mean the frequency of collision increase. Frequency of collision between apa? Between this hydrogen atom and this magnesium akan increase lah. Okay. So, banyaklah pelanggaran berlaku antara magnesium dan this uh, hydrogen. Okay. And then, the number of effective collision also increases. Okay, kan kita belajar collision dan effective collision dua benda berbeza. Okay, kalau collision tu berlaku, tak semestinya dia effective. Okay, so effective collision kalau back to chapter 1.2, dia ada uh, dua factors. Okay, dia mesti collide in the correct orientation. Okay, and another one must possess energy minimum kinetic energy EA ok so ini dia punya ciri-ciri lah ok so kiranya lagi banyak collision so maksudnya lagi lagi tinggi lah probability untuk kita dapat effective collision so that's why sini if kalau frequency of collision tinggi that's mean effective collision pun tinggi so bila effective collision tinggi kan kita dah belajar effective collision tu yang menghasilkan product that's mean the rate of reaction also increase ok so itu adalah factors affecting rate of reaction yang pertama iaitu particle size ok and the next one let us move to concentration ok so when the concentration increase the number of particle per unit volume increase ok so kalau concentration tinggi kamu boleh bayangkan kalau concentration tinggi tu maksudnya particle dalam solution tu banyak ok Uh, compared to yang low concentration. So, you can look here. So, imagine this is 
satu bekas lah ok ada satu container and solution dalam tu low concentration but for this container dia punya uh, apa solution dalam tu high concentration so kamu boleh nampak beza kan ok yang low concentration ni partikel dia sikit ok compact tu yang high concentration partikel dia banyak ok so you can imagine if high concentration partikel banyak so bila banyak partikel that mean tendency untuk berlaku collision tu lebih tinggilah so more collision ok so more collision compact tu yang low concentration ok so kalau banyak collision that mean banyak jugalah efektif collision yang mungkin berlaku dan rate of reaction pun increase ok Alright, so itu explanation kalau soalan tanya kenapa at high concentration the rate of reaction increase because at high concentration number of particle per unit volume increase and then sambunglah frequency of collision increase, effective collision also increase and rate of reaction increase ok and then this one ada extra information sikit tapi actually relate back to chapter 1.1 this observation cor correlated with the rate law discussed earlier ok so dalam awal-awal chapter 1.1 kita already kita dah discuss about rate law. Okay so this is rate law. Rate equal to K concentration A to the power of X, B to the power of Y where X and Y adalah order of reaction. Okay so based on the rate law kita boleh nampak reaction rate is directly proportional to concentration of reactant A and B ni. Okay so maksudnya kalau concentration reactant ni tinggi rate of reaction pun akan tinggi. Okay, however, reminder, okay, the rate of reaction is independent of concentration of reactant in zero order reaction. Okay, kalau dalam zero order, rate of reaction tidak bergantung kepada concentration of reactant. Okay, so rate equal to K, let's say lah concentration A power zero. Okay, so maksudnya rate equal to K, this is for zero order. So, rate tidak bergantung kepada concentration of reactant untuk zero order. Ok, so maksudnya statement ni hanya applicable for first and second order. Right, so let us move to the next factor iaitu pressure. Ok, actually concentration and pressure lebih kurang. Cuma pressure dia apply to chemical reaction involving gas. Ok, kalau concentration dia boleh aqueous, boleh gas. But for pressure, limited to gas only. Okay, so the effect of changing the pressure is similar to changing the concentration of reactant. Okay, so that's why dia punya explanation sama macam concentration. Okay, so when pressure increase, the number of particle per unit volume increase. Okay, so you can you can look at this diagram here. Okay, so ini piston. Okay, so first uh, get uh, dia punya volume besar. Volume besar, pressure dia rendah lah. But when we press the piston, so now... Uh, apa volume dia dah kecil so partikel tu very close to each other ok so number of particle per unit volume increase ok so kan partikel tu very close to each other that is mean tendency untuk collision tu berlaku pun tinggi so frequency of collision tinggi and next number of effective collision pun tinggi and as a result the rate of reaction also increase ok so that is pressure Okay, so next saya skip dulu temperature. I will go to catalyst. Okay, so the next factors affecting rate of reaction adalah catalyst. Okay, catalyst ataupun mungkin ke kamu panggil in Malay. Okay, catalyst is a substance that increases the rate of reaction by providing an alternative pathway with a lower activation of energy. Okay, so catalyst adalah satu bahan yang meningkatkan rate of reaction. Okay, tapi macam mana dia meningkatkan rate of reaction? By providing alternative pathway. Okay, dia provide alternative pathway. Dia macam jalan yang alternatif. Okay, yang ada activation energy yang lebih rendah. Sebab please remember back in chapter 1.2 kita cakap kalau lagi rendah dia punya EA, lagi senang reaction tu nak hasilkan produk sebab tak tinggi. Dia punya gap, gap yang dia nak kena atasi tu rendah. Okay, so you can look at this diagram lah. Okay, so in this diagram, ini energy profile diagram lah. Okay, so energy progress of reaction. This is reactant, this is product. Okay, so uh, kalau lah uh, without the catalyst, okay, without the catalyst, the activation energy is very high, yang biru ni. Okay, so kalau saya label EA without the catalyst adalah daripada reactant ni pergi ke atas ni. Okay, tapi 
when we add catalyst what happen adalah uh, dia akan provide alternative pathway so maksudnya dia akan ada another pathway another jalan yang EA dia lebih rendah ok so EA dia akan jadi rendah lah yang merah ni alright so another jalan eh saya tak cakap dia this uh, apa EA ni terus hilang tinggal yang rendah ni tak sebab dia kan cakap tadi by providing alternative pathway so macam kamu nak pergi dari KML nak pergi bandar ok ada dua jalan sama ada kamu lalu jalan yang utama ataupun kamu lalu jalan kampung layangan tepi pantai semua tu ok baru boleh ke bandar ok so maksudnya dua-dua jalan tu masih wujud so kiranya uh, activation energy yang tinggi ni masih wujud yang rendah ni masih wujud ok tapi lebih banyak return yang akan uh, guna jalan yang rendah ni lah ok sebab tak semua return ada energy yang tinggi ok so uh, return since activation energy ni rendah so dia akan hasilkan produk dengan lebih banyak lah alright so kalau soalan minta definition of catalyst ok you have to provide this sentence ok so this is definition of catalyst ok and another thing you should take note adalah catalyst will not affect the enthalpy of return or product ok uh, so apa yang dia maksudkan dekat sini adalah when you add catalyst return dia ok enthalpy return masih dekat sini enthalpy product masih di sini ok so dia takkan mengubah enthalpy return dan product ok so itu about catalyst and then next one kalau soalan minta explanation ok apa jadi when we add catalyst into rate of reaction inilah yang kamu kena explain when catalyst is added to the reaction the new alternative pathway we allow EA is produced ok so macam kamu state balik lah the definition and then kenapa kalau lower EA is produced so more particle can overcome the new lowered EA so kiranya lagi banyak particle lah yang boleh lepas EA ni sebab EA ni rendah ok therefore the number of particle that have higher energy than EA increase ok so number of particle yang ialah lagi banyak particle yang ada energy lebih tinggi daripada EA lah sebab EA dia rendah so frequency of collision increase number of effective collision increase and rate of reaction increase so bila banyak particle ada energy lebih tinggi daripada EA ok so maksudnya effective collision tu lebih banyak lah ok sebab effective collision kan bergantung juga kepada energy dia mesti ada energy yang at least sama dengan EA Alright, so hopefully saya tak menyebabkan kamu pening on that one. Okay. So next, kita go to temperature. Okay, so temperature also affect the rate of reaction. Okay, so ini tak susah lah. You can imagine macam kamu kamu buat air panas, bancuh milu dengan air sejuk, bancuh milu. So obviously yang uh, apa tu air panas tu akan cepat larutkan milu tu lah compared to yang air sejuk. Okay. Sebab when temperature increase, the average kinetic energy of reacting particle increase. Okay, kita kamu batut bayangkan. Okay, kalau lah kamu ada satu bekas and kamu heat kan. Okay, dalam ni ada solution ke apa ke. Okay, so partikel di dalam ni, when you heat the solution, this particle akan gain kinetic energy. Okay, so kinetic energy dia akan lagi tinggi. Okay, so dia akan vibrate dan bergerak dengan lebih laju lah. So more molecule will have energy higher than activation energy so kiranya uh, lagi banyak lah molecule yang akan ada energy lebih tinggi daripada EA so kalau dia ada, banyak molecule ada energy lebih dari EA maksudnya banyak lah uh, molecule yang boleh tukar daripada return pergi produk lah ok so the frequency of collision increase the frequency of effective collision also increase so maksudnya bila kinetic energy banyak kamu boleh bayangkan pergerakan tu terlalu laju dan dia akan berlanggar antara satu sama lain ok so bila banyak kali dia berlanggar so banyaklah uh, frequency of effective collision ok and then the rate of reaction also increase ok and then next one adalah this one Maxwell Boltzmann distribution curve kalau kamu tengok learning outcome for chapter 1.3 you should be able to explain juga what is Maxwell Boltzmann distribution curve and actually this Maxwell Boltzmann distribution curve is related to temperature that's why saya masukkan nota ni di bahagian temperature ok 
Okay, sebab this Maxwell Boltzmann distribution curve analyze the behavior of gas molecule at different temperature. Kiranya dia kaji behavior gas pada suhu yang berbeza. Okay, so kamu boleh tengok dekat sini. So, this graph inilah yang kita panggil Maxwell Boltzmann distribution curve. Kalau dia suruh draw Maxwell Boltzmann distribution curve, ini yang kamu draw. Okay, so this is number of molecule. Okay, ini energy. Okay. And then as you can see T1 less than T2 That means ada dua jenis temperature yang dia ukur dekat sini Temperature T1 dan temperature T2 Tapi yang kita tahu T1 lower temperature than T2 Okay So uh, Kamu tengok graph dia pelik sikit kan Okay and then another thing you should take note adalah The area under the curve represent the total number of molecule in the reaction Okay so kiranya area under the curve ni Untuk curve biru ni maksudnya num Total number of molecule dalam reaction Area under the curve merah ni pun sama juga number Total number of molecule In the reaction okay, Sebenarnya uh, number of molecule T1 Sama macam number of molecule dekat T2 okay, So the total number of particle under each curve T1 and T2 are the same Alright And then next one Only collision with greater energy than Ea are able to react Get over the barrier okay, So yang ini saya cakap ini energy Okay tapi kita tak letak lah berapa specifically nilai energi ni. Tapi kita letak dekat sini. Dekat area ni. Ini adalah Ea. Okay. So maksudnya. Ini adalah Ea. So above this line. Maksudnya. Energi dia more than Ea lah. Ini energy equal to activation energy. Ini energy more than Ea. Okay. So. Uh, untuk reaction tu berlaku. Ataupun untuk reaction menghasilkan produk. Reactant tu mestilah ada energy at least equal to Ea or greater than Ea. Okay. Ha, so that's why dekat sini dia tulis only collision with energy greater than Ea are able to react. Ataupun get over the barrier. Okay and then the graph 41 shows that only a few particle have sufficient energy Ea to react at T1. Okay so T1 yang mana? T1 yang biru. Okay, so kita tengok yang biru. Okay, so area untuk biru adalah ini je. So, yang biru ini je area dia. So, apa maksud dia dekat situ? So, maksudnya adalah T1 ni kan temperature dia low. T2 temperature dia high. Okay, so area under the graph maksudnya number of molecule. So, maksudnya number of molecule yang ada energy lebih tinggi atau sama dengan Ea dekat temperature yang rendah iaitu temperature T1 adalah sikit. Berbanding dengan number of molecule yang ada energy sama dengan Ea atau lebih dari Ea dekat temperature T2. Okay, this one complicated sikit nak explain dia. Okay. So, they get the, the graph of T1 shows that only a few particle have sufficient energy Ea to react at T1. So, kiranya at T1, area under the curve dia kecil je. So, menunjukkan number of molecule yang ada energy lebih besar daripada Ea sikit. Tapi kalau at T2, kamu boleh tengok area under the curve dia besar. Okay, it shows that lebih banyak particle yang ada energy lebih besar daripada Ea dekat temperature T2. Logik lah kan? Sebab T2, temperature dia lebih tinggi. So, bila temperature tinggi kita expect kinetic energy tinggi. So, maksudnya banyak molecule yang ada energy yang lebih tinggi dari Ea. Okay. So, therefore the rate of reaction will increase when the temperature increase. Okay. So, ini graph ni explain lah. Hopefully kamu boleh faham. If you have any question on this one, you can ask me in the class lah. Alright. So, I think that's all. Thank you.